lead the Sanford Mainers two to nothing. Fortunately for the hosts, Robbie Armitage able to walk off the field under his own power. His day is done at the hot corner. Jack Van Remord replaces him, and Pat Pederudi takes over on the mound. He makes way for rather. He takes over for Rhett Gay, who went two innings as the opener, allowed two runs on two hits, four walks, no strikeouts. The Mainers will be looking to get a lot of length out of Pederuti. He threw three innings in his last appearance against the Upper Valley Nighthawks, so he can do just that. On the season, it's his sixth appearance, 0-0 zero zero record with a 1.93 ERA. In nine and a third innings pitched, he's allowed five runs on five hits, only two of those earned. Seven walks, 11 strikeouts. He'll go to work against Cam Climo, Corey, Corey DiLoretto, and Curtis Robinson. And it'll also be interesting to see with Gay being a right-hand pitcher and now Pederuti being a left-hand pitcher, we'll see if that changes things for the Mountaineers in their lineup. A lefty out of Brown sets. His first offering is fouled away. Climo, his first time up, drew one of four Rhett Gay walks. Like many Mountaineers in their first trip, they ended up 0-for-0. Zero zero. The lefty ready, glove at the letters, the 0-1, a fastball up high. Adams tried to frame it, but Mertzel doesn't give him the call. It'll be interesting to see, Quinn, like you said, Pederuti is a lefty, but he's been very successful against right-handed bats this year. His 1-1, a fastball, call for strike two. Good amount of right-handed bats in this lineup as well. Uh, they got Gothier, McDermott, and Giordano, so that's three. Climo and DiLoretto, they got about six or seven batters that are right-hand hit, uh, hitters. Pederuti's 1-2, gets a check swing out of camp. Climo appealed down to first, set strike three. No problem for Pederuti against Climo, able to retire him on four pitches. The first strikeout of the game for the Mountaineers. Yeah, I can't start any better if you're Pederuti coming in facing the first batter in Cam Climo. And uh, Climo not too bad of a hitter at all, and he made Climo look a little foolish there on that check swing on a breaking ball in the dirt. That's really the first time a Mountaineer batter has been out of his element at the plate all game long and it took a pitching change to do it. Now Pederuti with one away faces Corey DiLoretto, who looks at a fastball low. In Pederuti's last outing against the Upper Valley Nighthawks, he had a lot of success against guys you might see in the All-Star game, namely Cole Frederick, Easton Kirk, and Garrick England, to name a few. Didn't allow a single run and just one hit over that span. So it's easy, it's easy to tell that he has a lot of success against righties as he fires a bit high against DiLoretto 2-0. Another righty in Connor Sharping is in the hole, although on deck is a lefty in Curtis Robison. Pederuti comes set. His 2-0 is driven to left field. A base hit. DiLoretto around first. He wants second. The throw from Tate gets him to retreat. A strong play defensively by Connor Tate. Leaves the batter, DiLoretto, to just a single. And the left fielder, Connor Tate, he's playing, and we saw this last time when we first came here. I thought it was pretty interesting, too, and I brought it up on air. The left fielder and the right fielder, they play more into the gap. Kind of like the left fielder turns into a left center fielder and the right fielder turns into a right center fielder. So anything even close down the line could easily be a double. DiLoretto almost making that a double. It took the strong arm of Connor Tate to hold him to just one. And you could really tell DiLoretto wanted to. He took that hard turn and he didn't make the decision to go back until he was about 25 to 30 feet towards second base. Instead, he has a single, a 1-0 count on Curtis Robinson. Pederuti can't fire at the knees. 2-0 to the Penn State designated hitter. Robison, in his first at-bat, grounded out to Rhett Gay, although a very athletic play robbed a base hit. Pederuti's 2-0, a fastball well outside. Robison didn't even have to think about swinging. Now he has a 3-0 count and a chance to draw the first walk from Pat Pederuti. 
The lefty on the mound quickly comes set, takes a look at DiLoretto on first. The 3 0 fastball called for strike one. Robinson had already taken a couple steps towards first. That pitch a bit off the outside, but Jeffrey Mertzel has a lot of room to give on those corners. Before the 3 1 time is called at home plate. Curtis Robinson readjusts his batting gloves as he gets back to the box. Pedarudi resets. His pitch is grounded to second. DiMartino charges, tags up the runner on second. DiLoretto for one is throw to first a bit high, and Robinson turns it into a fielder's choice. However, a very athletic play from DiMartino makes it two outs. Yeah, that was just a heck of a pick at second base by DiMartino, taking the short hop and uh, tagging the base runner and DiLoretto and almost turning into a double play. That would have been a sparkling web gem. The second one at second base that we've seen in this game. The first one came from Matt McDermott, and this one almost by uh, Drew DiMartino. Looked like he took a bit off his throw as he was getting ready to make the turn towards first. That was the difference to allow Robinson to reach. Now Connor Sharping gets a chance and fouls away Pedarudi's first pitch fastball. Sharping has a tough 0-for-1 line tonight. Drove one to deep. Center field got about 390 feet in the air before Shane Marshall ran it down. Sharping swings at the next pitch. Fouls it off the top of the screen behind home plate. Pateruti has an 0-2 count and a chance to throw the first scoreless inning today for the Mainers. Sharping has a word with the home plate umpire Jeffrey Mertzel as he's granted time to reset his stance. Robison a short lead off first. The 0-2, a curveball grounded to third underneath the glove of Jack Van Vermortel into left field. That should go down as a base hit. The inning continues for Brian Goulart. Second base hit of the inning for the Mountaineers as they continue to hit this Sanford Mainers pitching staff. And that was another, that was an 0-2 breaking ball that got too much of the plate. If you're Petter Rudy and Sharpen did a nice job staying back on that breaking ball, hitting it hard where it was pitched and right under the glove of Jack Van Remortal, who just entered the game. Now the inning continues for another lefty in Brian Goulart. He scored on a walk back in the second. Petter Rudy begins with a fastball knocked down by Orlando Adams. Took a long look at Curtis Robison to hold him at second. For as many times as Pedarudi's thrown strikes, it seems like he's really living below the zone and forcing Orlando Adams to work behind the dish. Pedarudi ready to 1-0, a fastball fouled away towards the Mainers' bullpen. The count is 1-on-1 one -on -one for the Hofstra first baseman. You certainly would rather live low in the strike zone rather than up high because hitters can, it's easy for them to elevate that pitch up um, in the strike zone, out of the strike zone. If you live down low, more chance they can hit it on the ground. Pedarudi, a long look at Robison. The 1 1, a fastball crowns him. Has to get out of the way. Took a couple extra seconds to regroup. It's 2 and 1. Stratton Pedaris waits on deck. Should the Mountaineers give him a chance to bat? Both runners on the base paths not being held. The 2 1, a fastball away. Goulart has a 3 1 count and a chance to load the bases with two outs. The Mainers looking to limit the damage here in inning number three. Pedarudi looking to finish off the scoreless frame. The 3-1, a grounder to first. Eric Stock can't knock it down as it gets to right field. Rounding third is Robison. The throw to the plate is not in time. On the throw, Connor Sharping advances to third. A two-out rally gives the Mountaineers their third run in as many innings. Yeah, and I feel like the Mountaineers, whenever you look up on the scoreboard, they're always up in the count, either 2-1, 3-1, 2-0, and it's really easy to hit if you constantly live up in the count, and Goulard was right there on that 3-1 pitch, getting a fastball he could handle, just hitting it into right field, past the diving stock, who actually made a nice effort on that play, but it was hit a little too hard. Scoring was Robison, and going first to third was Sharping, so good base running out of him. 
The extra 90 feet for Sharping gives Stratton Pederas a chance to make it four runs for the Mountaineers. He swings at the first pitch and fouls it over the first base dugout. Every time these teams play, it seems like Vermont always grinds at the plate and gets these early leads because of their always being ahead in the count, like you said. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Must be the air here. Pedrudy, a look at Goulard. The 0-1 to Pedera sails on him a bit. Misses up high, 1-1. One and one. Obviously, you're joking around about that, but I mean, the Mountaineers always seem to elevate their game coming here. I mean, the ballpark is beautiful. That could be it as well. Uh, just love to see them light up the scoreboard, I guess. Pederuti's 1-1 one, one gets Paderas flailing. A fastball had him off balance. 1-2 and two to the final batter in the Mountaineer order. Once again, Pederuti just one pitch away from finishing off the Mountaineers in the third. The lefty comes set. The runner on the move, the 1-2 gets Paderas to chase strike three. Pederuti records two strikeouts in the third, but the Mountaineers hit him where it hurts. That's on the scoreboard. They tack on their third run of the game. The, Ma the Mountaineers will send Ryan.